welcome to today's video. So today we're going to talk about my top favorite uh, watercolor brands. So my top five favorite watercolor brands. So I kind of have a tie in place at five, but we will get to that. Okay, so you can see that I have all of the tubes in this uh, wooden sort of a drawer. It was for uh, pastel pods, I think, and I got it like on a really super special deal at Jerry's a few years ago. And unfortunately, they don't still have them in stock. I know I'll get questions about that, but um, you're just looking for maybe some sort of a, I think this was for an easel, so like an easel drawer or something like that. But you can see here I'm showing you through some of the different brands and they're all packaged a little bit differently and you can see that some of the tubes like this is I think my third tube of shell pink and it's completely gone. The vermilion usually goes and so um, I think there were a couple of different tubes of the, the potter's pink you can see is nearly gone. That's my first tube of potter's pink. All the Windsor and Newton ones are usually pretty empty. I feel like I go through them quite a bit and then you can see um, a fresh tube of the iridescent white because I was out of that and some of the Turner grey ones. You can see their one tube of Sennelier, that's my only one. I love a lot of their other products like their pastels and oil pastels. I'm not really a big fan of their watercolours. So here we have a pretty good overview and a representation of the different uh, brands that we'll be talking about today and the different ways they're packaged okay so we're just going to first of all look at um through my palettes really quickly so this is my largest palette it is a schmincke pastel box and it has colors that i collected over maybe three or four years and i don't use that palette very much anymore i've kind of condensed it into these ones they're easier to you know put on the desk or on the videos uh, so the first one here that we have is the, um, this one I made two years ago as kind of a plein air palette, but this has become my staple palette. This has all my favorite colors in it. And I think I have um, switched out four colors since I did the last video. So I will do an updated swatch video of this uh, at some point. Because these are colors that I just can't live without and I have... They're colours that have been with me probably since I started watercolour six or seven years ago. So um, I know that I love them and um, we do talk about them quite a lot on the channel as well. So that um, was a Whiskey Painters palette, did I say? And then this one kind of ended, eventuated last year. This is a little Schmincke palette I got as a limited edition gold palette. And all of the handmade watercolors that I had collected just kind of ended up in here. So these two kind of, um, well, I guess where I started this channel as well and um, where I started sort of collecting the handmade watercolors. So this one looks like a whiskey painter's palette, but it's not. This is just an enamel one off Amazon. It was $20 and um there are you know it's quite long so i think it's got 36 wells if you use the middle so they actually market it i think as a 24 wells with like space for brushes in the middle but i actually just flipped the um kind of the metal things into the middle part to keep the middle um you know down there and that was that's worked really well so uh, this is a little Schmincke palette that I got a few years ago, three or four years ago, but you can see that it is um, housing handmade watercolors. So those are the kind of two um, new, you know, palettes that I organized last year. And then I also have this little palette. This is a Whiskey Painters, I think, enamel palette. And this one is kind of the start of my old master's palette. So... We have talked a little bit about that and I think it's going to expand and then I will show you. So you can see the kind of two directions I'm pulling, the bright colours or the kind of more muted colours. And so again, we have just the different brands and you can see how they're all packaged. Some come in the little 5 milliliter tubes, some come in the larger 15 milliliter tubes. Okay, so we're going to start with Daniel Smith. This was my first forage into artist grade watercolors so I had initially purchased and you can see pearl white was the first one that I purchased and it was kind of why I went looking for a I actually went looking for a pearl white or an iridescent 
uh, white watercolour. So I am just going to um, mix it here with the Kaput Mortuum and you can see that everything you mix the uh, pearl white with makes the colours sparkly or, you know, iridescent. So it's really lovely and versatile to have. And the next two colours that I got from Daniel Smith were the Sugalite, which is this one, and also the Fuchsia. And six or seven years later, they are still going strong in my palette. I really, really love both of them. And so they are actual colours from the semi-precious gemstones. And that's what I love about Daniel Smith. So in every brand that we go through, you'll kind of see why I like that brand. And they all have something different to offer. So the, the Daniel Smith paints have these beautiful colours that are from the earth. And so they have like some understated shimmer in them because they're, that's the rock. You know, that is the actual um, mineral. And so they call that their Primatech range. And now we're looking at the Schmincke colors. Schmincke have really creamy, beautiful watercolors. So we just did a few videos on swatching out the dot cards and my favorite picks from that. So two of my favorites from this range is the lemon yellow. I really love it. It's super creamy. And you can see here when I mix it with the Daniel Smith French ochre, it becomes more and more of a Quinn, um, a quinacridone gold and I will show you um, them side by side in a second and then this one here is the Schmincke cobalt turquoise which I really love again beautiful and creamy and then I mix it with the Daniel Smith pearl white and you can see that you've got like this aqua sparkly shimmer color so it's super gorgeous and um, I also love mixing the uh, Schmincke Cobalt Turquoise with the Daniel Smith Fuchsia. It cr creates a really beautiful colour. But here you can see that is the Quinn Gold and my mix of the Lemon Yellow and French Ochre and they're pretty close. And so I don't have a... Uh, and so here you can see some of my other favourites from the Schmincke range and these will be going in like an old masters kind of inspired palette. But I really love just having the lemon yellow and then the French ochre. So they're really versatile for me. So I don't really need like a another yellow in between because I just find that I can mix exactly the one that I want from those. So the next brand we're talking about is Windsor & Newton. And for um, this brand, I think I get it more for these specialty colours. Um... So they're really beautiful. I think here I'm uh, swatching Potter's Pink, uh, the Kaput Mortuum, and then this is the Cobalt Violet. So these are just super beautiful colors. And um, yeah, you can see that from every range, I kind of pull out different colors that will suit uh, the palette and will fit together. So I don't have a problem jumping between brands and kind of creating a palette from all different brands. You can see here, that in this palette I have, I think, six from Holbein. So that's the next one we're going to talk about. So these are all pastel colors, which means it is a pigment mixed with white. And I absolutely love having these in the palette. So um, already when you open the palette and you can see some of these pretty pastel colors, it's already starting. Well, for me, I feel inspired already to create and to paint. And so I think these were the first watercolors that I actually bought and then I intentionally went and found Daniel Smith the pearl white if that makes sense. We always used to go to AI Friedman it, it was an art store near us and um, I'd always walk past the watercolors and look at those and eventually I bought some and that's kind of where it all started but here um, we have the Grumbacher titanium white and the Turner gray gold and these kind of, both brands are kind of equal in fifth place on my palette. So this is the Grumbacher Titanium White and it's mi I'm mixing it there with the Kaput Mortuum. So um, you can see you get this beautiful smoky pastel colour. This is a really good shadow colour, a soft shadow colour. So whether it's in roses, whether it's in portraits, um... It's always in that palette. So this is uh, the other palette that I curated last year. So this has the some of the Turner ones in it. You can see the bronze, the grey gold, iridescent interference copper. 
and so I think it's got five the pale wisteria there so I got these they were on sale at Jerry's for six dollars so I think it's a really good deal um, if you can get them on sale like that and um, so this is the pale wisteria so they do create some colors that are a little bit more uh, niche than some of the other brands so I really love this gray gold and if you have you know a gold like the Schmincke gold you can mix that with a black to get something like this and this is kind of the reason I started this channel because it was quite overwhelming for me to find colors and figure out even where to look and so I wanted to kind of give a you know start starting point a jumping off point for you to be able to um, figure out you know some places you can find colors and what colors might work for you so this one here I know a lot of you love this is the pearl red in the Turner and then before that was the bronze and I will also you know leave the names of these brands down in the comments or the not the comments the um, description as well so this is the interference copper I think which is pretty much the same as the Daniel Smith one and then also um, yeah we'll talk about some other um, things tomorrow about that but so this is sort of a range of purples we have the Windsor and Newton cobalt violet the Holbein lilac and the Daniel Smith ultramarine violet and so those are the purples from each brand and you can see they're slightly different but I use them all all the time and then tomorrow we're going to talk about my favorite handmade watercolor shops my top five and you can see here this is what handmade watercolor brings to the table so this is such a gorgeous color this is a brand new one for me and it is the nibs watercolors copenhagen so we actually have something really special to talk about tomorrow we have been working hard behind the scenes and so that will be coming in a video tomorrow but um, you can see the vitality and the vibrance that the handmade watercolor can bring to that color sector in your palette i feel like it just opens up a whole new world of possibilities for your palette for your paintings and even if you're just doing it like art journaling like doing um you know washes on the background of your paper and then writing over it or kind of um doing some washes around your page and things like that these just add such a beautiful um extra okay so we have gone through the top five i've given you a little sneak peek of what's coming tomorrow but i also just wanted to quickly put this in at the end of the video so this is the nature journal that we'll be working on now it needs more work on the cover i'm gonna be um, sketching some dried hydrangeas and things but you can see i've done a little bit more inside so we were supposed to be doing a video about um how i am you know putting this together if you want to create a sketchbook insert for any travels notebook or you know any special purpose um doing a whole video so i might put that in at the end of this month i'm not sure but i just wanted to give you a heads up and you can see i'm trying a few different things here like i was um, playing with my vintage labels which are in my shop seeing if i want to wrap that around the cover as well but I know that some of you really like to follow along with the videos and tutorials so I didn't want to leave you till the end of the month or whenever I can record this video so I will link a video below that I have um, already sort of done this binding method so that you can see that and you can see here that I have been um, swatching some a few different pens and trying out a few different techniques here um, that I might want to try in the journal but what I was saying is I don't, um, you know, want to leave it till the end of the month. So I will um, link a video below that will show you all the steps of the binding method I'm going to use. Now, I still might do a little video on it, probably just not as thorough on this channel. And, um, you know, maybe some updates about where I'm at at the journal. But you can see this is what I'm replacing in this notebook. So this is a journal that um we created in the video that i will link you to and the printable for this is still in my shop so a lot of the journaling i've actually hidden uh, behind flaps and in pockets and things in this notebook and i had wanted to do more videos about this but i have just been you know way too busy um but 
this is the kind of thing that I really love. I think that I know that the feedback that I've gotten from you when you have tried out the printables is that you've really loved them. And I can't tell you how much I've appreciated the support with the printables this year. So um, basically, you know, I've done, I've been on this channel for nearly a year. It'll, I think it'll be a year like around March 10th or March 16th and basically done over a hundred videos and um you know i've gotten like a dollar per video so um the shop has really helped to be able to keep me creating content for you so i've i've i i really can't thank you enough for supporting the shop and i hope that when you get the you know printables it's something that will also give you a lot of you know it helps to me to keep creating content but I hope that it will really give you something and a, a really beautiful insert um, or you know papers you can collage with and things um, as well that you can use and enjoy to use so in this uh, travels company notebook there's only the one elastic so I jump banded these two um, you know inserts together with a piece of just just a piece of string actually so I just untied it and I've pulled the insert like the junk journal insert out and I'm going to put the nature journal in here so the nature journal does um, stick out of the sides a bit I did make it oversized I wanted that size for the nature journal so I had enough room um, I didn't sort of want to be you know squashed in so I gave myself a little bit of extra room there is overhang but I don't mind that and I wanted to make the specimens you know as lifelike sketches as I can so I wanted that extra bit of room and certainly for you you know if you want to um, so I just tore all these pages as well so that they have that kind of the a nice sort of decal edge look but you can tear them smaller so that they fit within the uh, Traveller's Notebook if that's, you know, how you like it. So, and also if you have a Traveller's Notebook that's different size, you know, you might like working in a B6 Slim or an A5 or an A6. So, you know, it's so versatile just to create your own insert. And then I will also be adding in some of... Um, the printables so I just want a couple of extra pages where I might be able to write a note or something like that but that is it for me for today guys I hope you enjoyed this and I will be back tomorrow with my top favorite um, handmade watercolors so I know that has been a requested video on just giving you kind of a head start so this whole month is pretty much going back to basics with watercolors and some of the things that I may um, have missed kind of doing a video about I want to um, start back from there so that there's some really good resources on you know shops that you can go to what the brands are like and we're also going to work on some really nice videos for how to control water and just how to start so we have basically been living in a um, snow globe the last week or two so here is you can see we're pretty much completely snowed in um i will anyway so i will i hope you're having a good week and i will see you guys tomorrow bye